CK line is a is a line that is through two points on your curve. Okay, CK line is through two points on your curve. So we are trying to find where the derivative it has the same slope as the slope between two lines, two points on the same curve. All right, so if we have this function, uh, f of x is equal to 5 minus 4 over x, okay? That's not 5 minus 4 over x. That would be the same as 1 over x, okay? Um, I just didn't write it like this, okay? This would be 5 minus 4 over x. We need to find all values of c in the interval from 1 to 4 such that the derivative at that value is equal to f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. Okay, mean value theorem here. Um, now, we should always check for continuity and differentiability. With this type of function, what is our concern with continuity? Dividing by 0. So when does that happen? at x equals 0. Well, is 0 in our interval? No, so it's okay. All right? It can have discontinuities as long as they are not in the interval. Okay? So, um, let's start by finding, well, what is the slope of our second <laughs> line? The slope of our secant line would be 5 minus 4 over 4, so that's 5 minus 1. f of 1 is 5 minus 4 over 1, so that's 5 minus 4, which is 1. So we've got 4 minus 1 over 4 minus 1, that's kind of weird, but that's what it is. So 3 over 3, the slope of our secant line is 1. Slope of our secant line is 1. So we want to know, well, where does the tangent line have the same slope? So we need to take our derivative. Okay, f prime of x would be the derivative of 5 is 0. The derivative of negative 4 over x, remember we can write that as uh, 4x to the negative 1. So we've got negative 4 times, bring down the exponent, subtract 1 from the exponent. So our function is 4 over x squared. Our derivative is 4 over x squared. Our question is, where does that equal 1? Where does that equal 1? So we set that equal to 1, because that's the slope of our secant line. To solve this, <clears throat> excuse me, we need to multiply both sides by x squared. So we get x squared equals 4, take the square root, don't forget the positive and the negative, but in this case, only the positive is in our interval. The negative is outside of our interval. Negative 2 is not inside of our interval between 1 and 4, so all we have to worry about is x equals 2. c equals positive 2. Just as a reminder, they love asking you for the equation of the tangent line. So let's do that while we've got this. Okay, so we want the equation of the tangent line at 2. Yes. Okay, we want the equation of the tangent line at 2. We need three pieces of information, correct? We need a slope, we need an x, and we need a y. How many of those pieces of information do we have right now? Wait, so two is our C. Two is our C, yes ma'am. We have two out of those three pieces of information. We have the x value, we just found that. C is two, C is representing an x. That's our x value. We have our slope, it's one. That's what we've been, that's how we came up with our C value. It had a slope of one. 
we only need our y value, where do we go to get our y value? The original function. Very good. So f of 2 would be 5 minus 4 over 2, which is 5 minus 2, which is 3. So the equation of our tangent line would be y minus 3 is equal to, the slope is 1, so I'm just going to leave that out, x minus 2. Or actually, let me put that in there. And then if the answer choices were in slope-intercept form, the majority of time they are not, but sometimes they are. We just need to add the 3, so that would give us y equals x plus 1. Okay, that is the mean value theorem. Let's look really quickly at application problem. Okay, don't write all this down. Okay, don't write all this down. Let's just get the essential information. We have two stationary patrol cars equipped with radar. They are five miles apart on a highway. So we have a car. Hey, this applies to Thanksgiving. Watch out for those troopers this weekend. Mm -hmm. They've been talking about it on the news. Let's see if I draw a patrol car. They're, exactly. They're going to give out more. That looks more like spaceship, but we're going to say that that's a patrol car. Okay. As a truck passes the first patrol car, his speed is clocked at 55 miles per hour. Okay, so he's going 55 right here. Four minutes later, when the truck passes the second patrol car, its speed is clocked at 50 miles per hour. So, minutes, minutes. Prove that the truck must have exceeded the speed limit of 55 miles per hour at some time during the four minutes. All right, so we're going to use the mean value theorem to prove this, okay? Because if he got from point A to point B, let's find out what his average velocity was over this interval, okay? How would we calculate average velocity? What is average velocity? Okay, it's derivative, but we don't have a function here. So let's just think about velocity in general. How do we calculate velocity? It is the change in position over the change in time, okay? Velocity is the change in position. Miles per hour. So let's calculate this in miles per hour. So four minutes is what fraction of an hour? Four over 60. Yep, which is 1 15th. Okay, so we've got to flip it over. So what is 5 times 15? Okay, 2 times 15 is 30, 30 times 2 is 60, plus another 15 is 75. All right, so his average velocity was 75 miles per hour over this interval. So, all right, tell me this, is his um, driving, is that a continuous function? Should be, right? You didn't like you know, like his, his car didn't just like pick up and, and move over here. Um, you know, we, we can't really do that. Okay. So to get from trooper A to trooper B, he had to drive that entire road. Okay. So it's a continuous function. There's no reason why it shouldn't be differentiable. So according to the mean value theorem, if his average velocity was 75 miles per hour over this interval, at least once, clearly for the majority of the trip there, he was traveling over the speed limit of 55 miles per hour. So at least once, he was at least once, according to the mean, um, let, let me write it this way, okay? According to MVT, mean value theorem, 
that looks terrible right there. Okay, according to the mean value theorem, because this must be a continuous situation right here, this is the slope of the secant line essentially. Okay, this is the secant line. So according to the MVT, his instantaneous speed, his derivative at one point, at, l at least one point, yes ma'am, the, the whole, the whole scenario right there, okay? The, the whole scenario, I'm sorry. Okay, that's the, the slope of the secant line. Okay, okay, that's that entire thing right there is the slope of the secant line. Secant line, you should be thinking average, okay? <laughs> average rate of change. So if his average speed was 75 miles per hour, at some point in time, his instantaneous speed had to be at least 75 miles per hour, right? Okay, and that's what this is talking about. So according to the MVT, um, his instantaneous velocity And I'm going to put f prime of c in parentheses here. Now, we didn't do anything with an actual function, but the same logic applies. Since instantaneous velocity um, had to be greater than 55 miles per hour at least once on this interval on this four minute interval. How fast do um well the, no that just gave a little bit more context to the problem. The speed limit was supposed to be fifty five. So you know obviously he's not speeding at triple one He's definitely not speeding at trooper number two because he's under the speed limit. But to have gotten from trooper one to trooper two in that amount of time over that distance, he had to be speeding. So technically, I don't know if they actually do this, but technically they could if they really wanted to. They could have two troopers set up and they could clock your time between the two troopers and prove that you were going over the speed limit. Between those, I don't think they actually do because then they would just have to like target specific cars, and they don't you know know whether they actually were, but they could. There's just some calculus in real life. 